Hey, Rock Leaders, welcome to another uh, Rock tutorial um, in relation to your video and multi-person conference calls that you guys are diving into recently. Uh, this particular video was all about troubleshooting. Um, we're gonna talk today about two areas that you might need to do some troubleshooting with on your calls. Um, there are the technical side of things that you might need to troubleshoot, and then there also will be some meeting management troubleshooting that you might run into. Um, in either of these situations, it's really important, or actually it's good to consider a planning tip to possibly assign someone in your meeting group to be the meeting host. Um, and you wanna do this before you start your meeting. Now the host is somebody much different than the facilitator or chair of the meeting. That person is ultimately taking on the role of helping people through the troubleshooting process. Um, so typically it would be somebody that maybe has a little bit of experience uh, with technology or computers. Uh, maybe they've used Zoom or RingCentral platforms in the past. Um, and they should also be okay with giving out their personal cell phone number uh, for those phone call participants that might have troubleshooting tips that you know, they could maybe text the host uh, during the meeting for some troubleshooting assistance. Okay, so it's not a necessity, but it's something that you really might want to consider just assigning somebody to take on that particular role. So with that being said, let's dive into these challenges a little bit. Um, now, participants who are calling in or joining by video um, on the tech side might experience some technical challenges trying to connect, they may have problems with the sound or the video being able to see, or they might even have some problems due to their internet connection. Um, so a couple of things we can reference. Uh, if you're, it, there's, there's a video portion that uh, you can actually turn your video camera on and off. And that's sometimes found in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, sometimes it's more towards the middle, depending on what type of device you're using. But you'll see a button um, if somebody says, hey, I can hear you, but I can't see you, it's usually a sign that that person needs to turn their camera on. Now, if you're using a device that doesn't have a camera, that's not gonna work for you. And that's okay too. You can still call in the same way, um, but the host of the meeting might be able to like walk you through how to turning, turn on your video without disrupting the meeting. Um, they may uh, reach out to you. There's a, t there's a chat box actually on the bottom of the screen. We've talked about that in previous videos. So your host might be able to jump and help you connect that way. Um, but you know, if you are on video and you can't hear or you can't see, you know, hearing is another thing that might be an issue. And what you might need to do is check the speakers of your system. Um, down at the bottom of your screen where you'll see the mute and unmute button, you'll see a little carrot. You can click on that to hit more settings and you can connect either by um, the internal system that you have, or you may be able to connect through the headphones if you're using a set of headphones, but you should look in that area. And again, you can connect with the host of the meeting through chat if you need more assistance. Now, if all else fails and you're calling in by video, you've clicked the link, nobody can see you and nobody can hear you and you're trying to figure out what to do jump off pick up your phone in the same invitation you were sent there should be a phone number you can dial into the meeting and you can still attend the meeting that way or again you can also download the app on your phone and try another way to log in now if you jump on and you're talking and the wi-fi gets a little spotty and how how do i know my wi-fi is getting spotty well, you might get a message on your computer that says your internet connection is unstable, or you may find people are saying that you're freezing or they're having a really difficult time understanding you. You may sound a little muffled. Um, if that's happening, uh, you may wanna reach out to your internet provider um, or go online and check internet speed. Uh, it could be an issue with your internet connection in general, and sometimes your cable company or whoever you get your internet through can help you through that. Or um, another recommendation that I've recently heard of is you can actually think about where you actually have uh, your router for your internet, and you might wanna try moving that a little closer to your location. Um, that isn't really something the host can help you with. 
it may be something you need to talk to your internet provider about. But again, if you're having internet problems, you can dial in directly by phone and then you're still gonna be on the meeting. You're just not gonna be able to use your video function. And again, and that's only if you decide not to uh, use the video app on your phone. So there's a variety of things that you can do. And in today's day and age between smartphones and, and regular tablets and computers, we have all kinds of options. Um, all right, so those are kind of some of the technical aspects. Let's get in a little more um, about meeting management. Boy, you know, everything is really great when everybody can hop on, but there are some things you can do to put some meeting management protocols in place. And uh, that also can uh, takes a little bit broader role from the chair or facilitator of the meeting. Um, but you really want to plan to set up your call for good success prior to hopping on the call. So you say maybe, how do I do that? Um, you are going to want to send information out prior to your meeting. You're going to want to send your agenda. You might want to send your meeting minutes. You may want to send your financial treasurer's reports or any committee reports prior to the meeting and ask participants to to try to review them before the meeting where they can. Um, you may have people that don't have access to email. You may have to hand deliver a copy to them. But the more information people can get early on prior to the meeting and be asked to review it, the more clear and direct your meeting is going to be when you get on. There's nothing worse than sitting on a video call when there's really just no clear direction or idea of what we're doing. All right. so. Now, the host can also take a small part of the meeting management as well. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but you also want to think about setting up some ground rules for your meeting calls. And you can also send these out ahead of time. You know, you want to let people know they should call in from a quiet and non-distracting location wherever possible. It's not always possible, but background noise and, you know, many people in a room can be really distracting. And uh, you should know as a participant, if you're not speaking, there's a mute function. You either have a mute on your phone or you have a mute on your computer. In either case, you really want to mute in order to uh, eliminate some of that background noise. So it takes a little bit of practice knowing that, hey, it's my turn to talk. I'm going to unmute when I'm not muting. I'm going to put, when I'm not talking, sorry, I'm going to put the mute back on. Okay. so. Um, another challenge may be that, you know, there's a lot of people having conversation. You're not really feeling, uh, maybe you're not on video and people aren't seeing that you're raising your hand uh, to speak. And the chair, again, plays a really important role because they should try to make sure that as they're going through things, that they're really reading the room of who's on. But call participants are important too. So you always want to make sure you're checking in with those on the phone asking if they need to speak or have anything to add to the conversation. Um, and again, if there's a meeting host, the chat box function is a really great place to interject questions or just statements. And also, you know, I personally like to use my cell phone. Um, I can text somebody when I'm having, I have a question I can't seem, maybe I'm on the phone, I don't have access to that chat window. So I'm gonna text the question to either the host or the chair. Okay, the host or the chair can interrupt and say, hold on a second, Jeannie has a question. Let's dive in to her question before we get back to the agenda. Um, so whenever, again, so that's a little bit about like how to manage participation. And, uh, you know, and, you know, as you go through the agenda of your meetings and you have topics, you know, using roll call. Roll call, we've talked about it in previous videos, is an important part of the meeting where you can identify those who are on the call. Again, remembering that not everybody will be on video. You're fortunate if you have everybody on video, but make sure that you've identified those who are on the phone. Make sure you have a list and your secretary has a list of who's in the meeting. Um, and make sure that if you're a participant and you're on the phone and you go to speak, or even if you're on video, those on the phone need to hear you. You may wanna say, hi, this is Jeannie. I wanted to add this. Identify who you are. Again, this is a little different than sitting around a meeting table. We're all in a remote environment. Um, so as you're going through the meeting, just remember, identify yourself. Try to wait for the chair to call you when you have um, something to say. Use the chat box or texting if you really need to get something in and you feel like you're not being heard. And mostly for the chair, 
make sure that when you're going through and asking people to vote, that you're going through the roll call and asking people clearly to vote yay, nay, or abstain. Uh, that way, everybody gets to be heard. You're not just assuming that everybody uh, voted in the affirmative. Um, and later on in this video, you're gonna see, we're gonna, I'm actually gonna uh, share with you guys a sample uh, call-in meeting and some of the things that I'm talking about today, you'll actually see um, come into play. You'll actually see how they were managed. Hopefully it's very helpful. Um, and again, uh, a couple other quick things. If you're recording the call, make sure that people know that you're recording the call. Make sure nobody has any objections. Um, you know, that could come down the road. People might not be comfortable being recorded. Uh, there really shouldn't be a reason to record the call if it's a board meeting, um, and especially if you're going to move into uh, an executive session. Okay, so executive session will still apply um, in a remote video call. Um, so those who, you know, your members should be able to call into your meeting. Um, meetings should be held openly. So if you have members available, the host and the chair should make sure that everybody who's not on the board of directors um, has either removed themselves from the meeting or there is actually a function you can put them on hold. Um, I recommend the easiest way to do that though is just to ask everybody who's not part of the board to step off of the call. Um, you know, typically when you open the meeting back up to vote, you know, you can let people know um, that you're only going to vote on items of executive. And, you know, that's a little bit broader of, a, of a, a technical challenge, but there are some pretty cool tools with Ring Central. So um, if you want to, if you have somebody that's tech savvy, you can play around with them. Um, just again, just remember an overview that, you know, set up your meetings well, establish some ground rules for meeting, really think about having a meeting host and having the facilitator of the meeting really use the roll call process. And just most of all, be patient with one another. This is something new to a lot of us. Um, we're diving into technology head first these days and, you know, allow some space for mistakes and allow some space um, for people to speak, you know, and be heard. Don't be in a hurry if you can try not to be. Um, and, you know, at the end of a meeting, when you're done, make sure that you're following up through an email with some action items, just in case people uh, weren't able to hear clearly, you know, always respond with, you know, the secretary can send out minutes, but the chair can also send out the action items that were responded to. And um, okay, so let's, uh, next up, we're gonna actually show you a sample uh, meeting. Hopefully you'll find it helpful and educational. Um, if nothing else, maybe a little humorous. Again, uh, congrats on finding new ways to do business in your rock. Uh, you're keeping your members and your board, your leaders and your members engaged. Um, make sure you reach out to your TA providers if you, if you need further technical assistance. That's what we're here for. We're here to help. We're all in this together. Rock on. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you come back for the next topic, which who knows what that might be.